Hello, Daisy. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Welcome to the sixth edition of H Pop Malaysia's Fireside Chat. Tonight, we are going to talk about something that's very close to our heart indeed COVID 19 and the pandemic. COVID-19 is not just wrecking up lives and uh, economy all over, but it is also doing a lot of damages to buildings as well, both internal and external. And also the people who are living in buildings, people working in them and people who are managing them. You know, uh, there are such a lot of uh, new things out there, new challenges that all of us are not quite aware. We never knew that these kind of problems existed. Hence, tonight, let us dive into the subject of property management now, which is still, you know, CMCO, EMCO. And uh, after that, post pandemic, what is going to happen? What are the problems that we are encountering now? What are the legal issues that we can expect uh, to crop up? And uh, more importantly, the reality of what we are confronted with. You know, uh, is life going to be quite the same again or things are going to change? Now with us tonight, uh, we have three gentlemen who are seafoods in, in this area of property management and related uh, matters. Uh, allow me to just uh, quickly inter, uh, introduce them. First of all, Anthony Lidi. Anthony, can you just wait, Anthony? Yeah, that's Anthony. Anthony has over three decades of experience, no joke, 30 years, across multidisciplinary areas in architectural, property management, and construction. He conducts independent inspections of property and uh, building conditions and forensic investigations where well, Anthony believes that every property owner should be entitled to the best quality and workmanship our industry can provide. His vision as how he sounds it in one line, do it right, first time, every time. Next, we have Chris. Hi, Chris. Chris is the founder and managing partner of Tor Associates. Uh, of course, Chris founded Tor Associates, uh, which is a legal boutique that uh, quote Chris, a friendly solution for clients. And this range from corporate advisory to just about everything real estate. He is a regular guest speaker. You would have heard uh, of him from him, I'm sure. And he also is uh, a frequent columnist, you know, uh, with some local and overseas publications as well. And uh, of course, you know, he also goes on radio shows. Last but not least, we have Mr. Uh, Lau Hong Kiong. Hi, Hong Kiong. Hong Kiong is the executive director of Henry Putra Malaysia, Mon Kiara. Uh, in case, you know, uh, for the benefit of people who are not aware of this setup, uh, Hong Kiong is a specialist in property management. Uh, he is a registered valuer and estate agent, and he holds a degree in property management from University of Technology of Malaysia. While he has more than 15 years of experience, very extensive indeed, in managing residential, special purpose building, commercial, retail buildings, name it, he has it. And he and his team currently manages over. 18 properties. Yeah, before we, we, we get on with the chat tonight, uh, I must take this opportunity to just mention here that both Anthony and Cream actually depend on the panel of judges of H4 Malaysia's Best Managed Property Award. And the results of this year's ranking will be made live for the first time on FB on June the 23rd. And uh, of course, you know, this is one occasion that everybody will be invited uh, to this uh, otherwise very exclusive and closed door uh, event of the year. So, thanks to the year. Okay, let, let's get on. Uh, let's get on with the, the matter of the day. Um, 
COVID-19 and then the MCO first hit, maybe we start with Hong Kong. The day when MCO hit, what was your reaction? Um, uh, good evening. Selamat buka puasa to everybody. Uh, first of all, I'm not the CFO in property management. I think there are a lot of people out there in the industry. Um, when the MCO hit us, I think it's on the 6th, the 18th of March. Okay, on the night of 16th, we got an announcement from the PM that the country going to start the lockdown. So I'm sort of shocked a while before reacting to it, when we quickly created an internal check group, but to prepare ourselves, uh, to prepare our buildings, because there are so many occupants in the building, especially for residential building. We will never experience a high occupancy in any time, right? Because during Hari Raya, during Chinese New Year, during Christmas, we all travel by the home. But this round, the building is at the highest occupancy. We have to make sure essential services like uh, security, cleaning, lift, right? And before the thing, thing to do it, for example, your electrical switch room, right? Your firefighting, right? As well as uh, uh, what they call your uh, uh, NDF room, okay? Make sure that your data, your internet is stable at all times. Okay, so I think we prepare in, in accordance to that because no one had that experience, right? Mm. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, you know, can I just uh, request the the panelists to check your phone because there's some interference. You know, maybe some gadgets out there is interfering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's better now. Yeah. Just turn off, turn off your phone. Turn off your phone. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yes, sorry, Hong Kong. Yep. Before we maybe before we dwell into you know the whole rigmarole of what to do A to B and, and so on and so forth, you know. Tell us what was your reaction when you first say, you know, as a lockdown? Uh I think I, I think I'll be worried uh, because we, we manage quite a number of buildings, right? And we got to make sure the occupant in the buildings, right? Either commercial or residential. I think in this case, residential will be the the, the focus. I got to make sure the occupant in the building really got what they supposed to have in the building. For example, the lift got to function. Okay, all the services have to be uh, functional basis, and make sure that there's no any interruption, there's no any breakdown. And we also quickly, I quickly call up uh, lift companies to make sure that they have someone on standby in case of any man threat, any breakdown, they must attend to it. What is the essential? Okay, and things to do with security uh, and safety kind of uh, uh, call, uh, management. Mm. Yes, uh, okay. I, I think there's still a bit of interruption. Uh, so, uh, gentlemen, you have checked your phone. Everything is okay. It's off. Yeah, yeah I'm not sure what, what's happening. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, let, let's just move on. Yeah, okay. Uh, um, just wondering, yes. uh, any one of you are also on another another window, probably starting uh, Facebook as well. Can you just close that? Yeah. Probably yeah. that will interrupt as well because there's noise from there. Yeah. Correct, correct. Yes. Yeah. Anybody have a, has a gadget that's on Facebook? Uh, I don't. Or even on your screen right now, there's another window for Facebook. Just take it off. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think we're better now. But we lost uh, Hong Kong. Let him sign in soon. Yeah. Okay, maybe we just move on while waiting for him to come in. Yeah. Uh, maybe Chris, you know, uh, yeah, give us your reaction when we first, uh, first heard about the MCO. I mean, you know, you will have a lot of clients uh, who will be calling you up, I'm sure. Yeah. I think I think when you talk about MCO in the context of property management, I want to highlight one very important thing is that these are unprecedented. Nobody experienced it before. Uh, nobody is ever prepared for it. Right, and therefore, uh, to if you ask me, remember the announcements on the 16th yeah. of March, and yes. the prime minister is saying that on the 18, you know, if you want to travel, whatever, 17 is the last day, blah blah blah, and then 18, you basically stay where you are, and whatnot. So, stay at home have been interpreted as stay at home town. So, we have a mass exodus on the 17th of March. But I'm highlighting to you all this is because, uh, effectively, on the M MCO, uh, we have only six rules uh, initially. There's only six laws. What you can do, what you shouldn't do, what you can do, what you should do. There's a lot of gap as to what can be done and what cannot be done 
a lot of a lot of these are subsequently being addressed by the on and off press conference that you need to go through the proper channel, right? So I'm saying to you, these things are being clear uh, and created in time. So I'm saying to you, a lot of time we have to uh, rely on our give of the gap as to what is necessary, what's the things to do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So maybe and uh, Anthony, you want to share with us uh, quickly before we move on to the main discussion. Oh, okay. Well, I, I was actually in, in Sabah at the time when I when I got the announcement, and immediately I had to catch the last flight back out because you know I knew that if I didn't get back home, I was going to be um, you know because already there were signs of COVID around, and it was just that you know was, you know the veracity of it was so quick, and the announcement came very suddenly. So I think it, it caught a lot of us off guard, but you know we were kind of having it in the back of our mind. But having that lockdown was like you know it, it's here, you know, so it's having to, to to deal with that. Yeah, obviously, you know, when I came home, I immediately had to quarantine myself uh, for fourteen days at home. You know, although back then the quarantine was not quite uh, in place yet, but knowing you know already knowing it, even while we were traveling together in the, during the judging, yeah. I was saying we yeah. were taking the steps. Of, yeah. You know, uh, it's just dawned on you the full scale yeah. of, okay. of having to do the lockdown. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And welcome back, Hong Kong. We missed you. We we're worried. Yeah. Maybe you went on to, to check another building or something. Commercial, yeah. commercial break. Commercial break. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, very quickly, you know, tell us about uh, what are the, the, the main issues of property uh, management that you've encountered so far? Yeah. Uh, if you can keep them uh, in pointers briefly, then you know, then the rest maybe can jump in. Yeah. Hong Kong. Okay. Yeah. Um, as now as we are at the uh, CMCO, yeah. right? Uh, the op the building actually we slowly open up to visitors as well as yes. some other contractor to start work. I think there are a lot of uh, concern from building owners. Let's talk about commercial buildings. Okay. The day when the CMCO came. And uh, the JMB or the MC uh, actually is very concerned about what are the precautions that that we the management have to take. Okay, things to do with screen visitors, screen your visitors. Okay, screen your owners or your tenants. So social distancing is the main challenge for us, especially in office building, All right? Because in the morning, probably now they are about fifty percent occupancy. Uh, some of the companies come back to work. If we if we don't control it well. You can see a lot. It was still long queue outside the buildings because of the distancing rules. And the right. lift also usually will take about ten to twelve uh, uh, dot per trip. Now the most is about four to five or even three. So that is the main challenge that we are facing for residential building. As mm -hmm. for uh, I mean commercial building. As for as for residential building, I think owners are getting more and more concerned. The awareness about this uh, what they call the pre preventive step of this COVID-19 is there. So they are very cautious. Are we allowed visitors, visitors to come in or not? Okay, are we allowed visitors to come in or not? What are the steps that we take? And we do want our building being locked down like some other places. So these are the challenge that we need to, we need to uh, go through every day. And all the SOP, uh, it's not by day. Like every few hours, you'll get new SOP. Every few hours, you'll get update for KPKT, for COB. So I think the constant communication with this is very important. These are the challenges. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I'm sure you know there are different sets of uh, uh, challenges for different types of buildings. Maybe you talk about retail. There's something else, right? You talk about uh, commercial offices and hospitals yeah. and industrial and residential. This is something else. Maybe tonight, uh, because of the fact that we don't have a lot of time, let us uh, primarily focus our attention on homes on strata properties. I, I think, you know, I, I think that's quite a lot to talk about, right? Yes, on the one hand, we hear you, Hong Kong, uh, there are actually uh, a lot of anxiety and with each passing day, uh, instead of subsiding, the anxieties actually rise because uh, really it's a new day and every day that you find that there's different thing happening, right? Yeah, you find that uh, things are evolving and, and you need to actually keep up with uh, what's happening on the ground. But maybe, you know, if, if we just take a step back now and uh, focus on, say, like the building, maybe, Anthony, you can share with us. Have you had a chance to visit any building after the lockdown? Oh, yeah. In fact, we have started, Architect Centre, we've started doing inspections about now the second week. And immediately, you know, we uh, had 
run into issues because you know when we go inspections we are moving into a building that's full of people and obviously the reason why we are even doing the inspections is because obviously there are very critical things that we needed to go and do the inspections that we could not access these buildings at that time so finally we had permission to go in and then the first thing we got hit was because some of the foreign workers didn't have uh, were not tested for covid and then you know and even when you ask them you say look you need to get tested there was this flip flop decisions whether they should get tested or not tested finally when they finally got wanted to get tested there's a long waiting list so finally a lot of inspections had to be put off uh, mm -hmm. and get going uh, we also had restrictions as far as other value chains meaning uh, we had to get approvals for certain equipment and those approvals could not get going so i think uh, uh, as a start there's a lot of inertia but i can see that one thing that's very good is that, um, that we don't see a lot of resistance. People are generally very cooperative. I think what they really need is just clarity of rules and clarity of what to do and what right. not. Right, right. Yeah. Just to, to understand you a little bit better, when you say you have started inspections, what inspections are these? Were these actually, you know, uh, scheduled before the MCO, after the MCO? In what context are we talking about? Uh, some of these inspections we, uh, were scheduled before. Uh, the, I see. Uh, and some of the inspections were in fact requested for us to mobilize after the MCO because of issues of safety. You know, I see, uh, I see. I see. Oh, that's interesting. Maybe without mentioning names, are you in a position to share with us, you know, what seemed to be the issue after a building has been like locked down for like X number of weeks? Yeah. Yeah. I think fundamentally, uh, uh, very in a nutshell, buildings were not contemplated in design that to have a long duration of shutdown. I think that's a fact. Uh, you know, buildings were, were shut down for long periods of time. Basically, you know, we have a lot of issues with it and we are only becoming to understand the issues that are emerging as the people are beginning to go in. We can only have theory. We think this is going to be a problem. We think this is going to be a problem. And we were discussing this in, in amongst our inspectors, even in week three of into the MCO. So finally, in, uh, I think over the last two to three weeks, you're beginning to see in social media of buildings becoming moldy and things like that. But I think those were the exception. I think we are, very, we are a lot, we're concerned more with, in fact, uh, the normal problems that occur even before MCO, issues of fire safety, issues of lift safety, electrical safety. Many of these buildings, they missed inspections in just two months. You know, when, you, when, you, when you're due for an inspection, meaning that you have done repairs, and you're waiting for the authorities to come in or certain people to come in to do inspections. But in right. these two weeks, uh, in these two months, uh, many buildings, I, I think some of the percentages are quite quite high. I think I have okay. some numbers here. Yeah. For okay. like for example, fire certificates for the for the apartments that are above shopping malls, you know, service apartments. I think 16% of these buildings that re require fire sets were missed inspections. 16% of buildings, yeah. And then I think it's about, uh, for, for lift, there's about 13% of lifts that we estimate just currently now operating without lift CFs. Okay, and then for electrical safety, about 8% of buildings would have missed the electrical inspections. So, so some of these inspections that we've started, we are now moving in again, where owners are saying, look, hey, uh, come in and have a quick look to make sure that our firefighting systems are okay and things are, are running uh, better, okay? Yeah, just, just to make sure that they are performing because the main concern is that they are, they are afraid that the systems fail like fire or lifts and it becomes a liability issue and safety issue as well. Yeah, interesting, uh, you know, liability and legal issues, Chris. Yeah, the stage is yours now. Now, I'm just saying to you is that you're talking about at this moment because of the MOVIC, uh, uh, the, the MCO, uh, uh, that cannot perform inspection, cannot do this. As a result, you cannot renew. Even if you want to renew, if you've done everything else, the authority is not open to receive. So I'm saying to you is that probably in terms of the transitional period, I think it's acceptable. But once the authority is out, then authority will probably require to give a proper guideline as to what that is. I think safety, as far as this concern, we have to understand, you know, uh, those are the standards that has actually been in place. For example, prior to this entire pandemic or COVID-19, all right? So whether the relevance of those safety, even if we get it certified at the moment, even if we get it passed through at the moment, does it good enough to deal with the new normal? 
That's what I'm trying to highlight. As a result, there's plenty of SOP being running around and whatnot, and, and Hong Kong rightfully saying that, you know, uh, every, every other hour, there will new SOP come out. You know why? Because they're, they're trying to tell you that safety today include public health concern, include uh, not just like, you know, the, the malfunctioning of the leaf or entire thing collapse. No, it's more than that. It's about also where we should stand in the leaf, you know, how we should touch the button of the leaf, you know, and all the common property, how we're going to use it. All right, so I'm saying to you is that safety into this concern, even I'm putting up very at large at the moment, right? Even if I can do the fire cert, even if I can do the fitness of the leaf, you know, everything is being checked, the engine room is all proper, right? But is it ready for whatever it is? Yes, it is illegal. Yes, it is probably four below the compliance minimum required at the moment because there's no new law. But if you talk about human incapacitation of a residential property, I'm saying that the expectation of life is higher than just that now. Sure, sure. Understand. Uh, we hear you, but okay, if we leave that extension aside, we can just talk about the legality of the compliance in so far as the authorities is concerned. Is that a question mark or is that like, you know, what some people have said, you know, they should be a legal shield uh, of sort. Yeah, because these are times that nobody have uh, thought about, right? Yeah. What do you yeah, think? I, I, I'm, I'm, of, of course, Malaysia don't have a COVID-19 uh, bill in a way or an act like uh, like some other jurisdiction they have. For example, they say that because of this, everything got suspended and blah, 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 whatever. So I think uh, what is being been done or what is being contemplated is that they expect, at least on the authority side, they know what happened, right? On the authority side, they know what happened. Therefore, they will then flow the, the discretion to the decision maker. And what we have seen so far in the MCO, I think at least uh, from the civil servant side of uh, the government, uh, I think we are seeing pretty rational decisions so far. Right. So I'm saying to you is that uh, I would expect, you know, because we don't have a legal shield for sure. I can straight away tell you don't have. We don't have. And everything is that you have to wait in the line to go to the court anyway. Yeah. Correct. So, so, yeah. so, so yeah. yeah. So the word that I, I seem to hear here is correct me if I'm wrong, discretionary. Because, you know, this has never happened before. No, nobody predicted that this has happened. Right. So, OK, going along those lines, discretionary. Hong Kong, uh, do your clients, meaning the JMBs, the tenants, do they give you a lot of discretion? I, I would like to back to the fundamental of property management. Okay, like uh, shared by Chris and Anthony just now, whether inspector or inspector, I think whether passed or passed on paper, I think it's one thing. The most important thing is the regular inspection, regular plan, preventive maintenance PPM must be carried out too. Right, because you do know you do not know what will happen at any one time, even during MCO or even before uh, during festival season. You got to make sure the safety of, like we say, not only the occupant in the building, but the uh, public safety who visited the building also very concerned. So the our GMB and MC um, do give us uh, what they call ask us to be practical as practical as possible, right? Uh, do not carry out certain unnecessary rules, which is not set out by the uh, in the SOP of MOH. All right. So I think back to uh, just now back to fundamental, the regular inspection, regular maintenance is very very important. So GMB yeah. and shouldn't neglect on this part. Yeah, uh, definitely. But what we are saying is, you know, in an abnormal circumstances such as now. When you know there was like uh, MCO uh, a lockdown for two months. Say for instance, uh, you know, okay, March eighteen was the first day of the the MCO. If your inspection had been uh, slated for say like uh, May first, for instance, you know, which yep. was still under MCO, you, you would have missed it anyway. I, I think that's what uh, Anthony is saying, right? I mean, it, it, it's not of your doing, but because of the extenuating circumstances, then what happens? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that, that is the position. But of course, what you say make a lot of sense. If there is regular, you know, inspection, so maybe perhaps, you know, one or two months, hopefully might not make a lot of difference. Yeah. La. yeah. Yes, yep. Chris? I would like to add on in, in relation to that. For example, if really it's 1st of May, that you're supposed to get your cert and everything else. All right. Yeah. To me, uh, at the end of the day, even if you want the authority to exercise discretion, 
It would have to be reasonable. So I'm saying to you, it's like, for example, uh, Hong Kong as a property manager will probably need to make sure that, you know, he actually try to do it, right? So with evidence to say that, you know, I've done this and whatnot, put record of this, and I actually send an email. I mean, supposedly, even the government, they are only closing down their premises. The, the, the entire mechanism of the government in terms of doing the certification and getting renew the thing is not dead per se. So you can still send email. You can still have record that you make a phone call. You can still send a registered post. All this is in place. And if as a result of this, there's still a delay, then you stand a very good chance to explain your way out of the non-compliance. Sure. Sure. Uh, so I'm highlighting to you that I think it's important that, you know, uh, discretion, because I want to say this, the fact that we have a lot of SOP, right, from MOH is one thing. The other SOP is also from KPKT, because KPKT recently got a 18 May one, then updated on 20th May, which is yesterday, and then now uh, they're going to do it again. So I don't know. What I'm saying to you is the, the fact that if the fundamental that mentioned by Hong Kong just now in relation to what are the fundamental we must do, one of the fundamental I would say to you is this. If there is an SOP, follow the SOP, right? Yeah. And if we follow the SOP and it still things happen, at least I can say I already comply with the guideline. Because a lot of people ask the question, this SOP, are they law or not law? Mm. If you don't follow, is it illegal or not illegal, right? I can give you my initial conclusion for the KPKT one is all guideline, right? When you have an FAQ to explain a law, or explain a guideline it actually means it's not really enforceable per se, right? Yeah. But I want to highlight one thing is that even follow SAQ, uh, uh, the FAQ, right? Follow the SOP, for example, we will still have a lot of discretion. The other day, I was just talking to, to Anthony in our PAM session. I said, even if I tell you, you need to sanitize three times a day, happy, right? Correct? But what is the standard of sanitization? The extensive of it. So the thing yeah, is yeah. that notwithstanding the number and quantitative thing, the qualitative thing standard is again not objective. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Uh, thank you for for for, the, for highlighting that, Chris. Uh, I I think uh, what you said is is actually uh, makes a lot of sense that the the MCO should not be used as an excuse uh, for any delay, right? Yep. So your effort in uh, compliance must be documented as yes. proof that you have actually done your best, uh, Yeah. Uh, Come tell us, uh, uh, any of your uh, JMBs, your tenants, are they asking for a waiver of, uh, you know, uh, mm. whatever payments? This yeah. is this is the, the I think the hottest issue right now. Every yeah, now yeah. and then, we got the WhatsApp, we got the email, we got the whatever yeah. respondent. Just curious, from, how much of a discount are they asking for? Just curious. Uh, by chance, I think they are actually. Some of them actually asking for a waiver of two to three months of service oh. charge. Oh, so okay. I think for me is I think service charge actually is presented in the AGM. Is they go GMB and MC go for a budget, and yeah. very important thing is GMB and MC is not profit organizations, right? Most of the budget they did are almost at the very very minimal health surplus, right? Because they are not there to make profit or make a reserve. So I think some of the new new JMB or MC, I don't think they have a lot of reserve. So I think it's, it's kind of, uh, we need to balance it, uh, whether or not, if you give discount, but your service provider doesn't give you discount, and eventually you will end up with deficit accounts, right? Mm. Because the old JMB and MC, maybe more than five or 10 years, they do have uh, quite a number of reserve in, in their marketing. So perhaps GMB and MC, with, with uh, what they call uh, uh, direction by the authority, right, approval by the authority, maybe you can look up some CDs or some uh, what they call a discount to, to during this MCO, right? But all subject to the uh, cash flow position, right? And I think yeah. that, I mean, in, we do have two funds. One is maintenance fund, one is sinking fund. Sinking fund is always sinking. All right, we, we, we use it for capex. So perhaps the authority can allow JMB and MC to have certain drawn down for single fund just yeah. to so the cash flow is in order right now at this moment. Yeah. And maybe after two, three months, the JMB and MC got to make sure the fund is uh, initial. Yeah. I, I like so you should, yeah. 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 You know, asking for, for waivers of service charges and, and sinking fund. I think you know for two to three months where if your buildings are well managed from the beginning, 
you know, you have already done a lot of maintenance. I think two to three months, you know, may not really have significant effects. But for a lot of properties that we do see, you know, properties that I think Hong Kong may not be running, uh, the one on the periphery, a lot of those buildings are already on the verge of, uh, the equipment already on the verge of, of failure. And most of those people do not replace those till it breaks down. And as a result of this COVID time, we have found that many buildings were already, you know, about to break down. And when, when, when occupancy just went through the roof, you started to get pipes getting burst, sewage pipes getting clogged, uh, lifts breaking breakdown, things like that. So now if, if people were to now say, look, they don't want to contribute more towards service charges. In fact, that would just sink your, your quality of your services even lower. And it's always more expensive for you to come back and repair them than to maintain them properly. So that's a relief that, you know, people out there, please, you know, don't, don't you know, penny wise pound foolish here. Yeah. Always remember that you, know, you're all, you are living in those properties and the essential equipment must be maintained properly. Okay, mm -hmm. so I think that, that's something that I'd like to weigh in on. on, on yeah. the direction. It's a but, dangerous direction. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, Chris. Uh, okay, uh, uh, since we are talking about residential only, I mean, if you talk about commercial and everything else to ask for discount because you can't operate your business and blah, 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 I can understand. Right, perhaps the load feather is not there. Perhaps the the accordingly, I don't have to clean that much toilet every day, you know. Yeah. Right, but I'm highlighting to you that if you talk about residential, in fact, the load now is higher mm. and not shorter. And because of the SOP, uh, Hong Kong need to do more work and hire more <laughs> people. Right, I, I'm saying to you, it's actually a uh, no brainer. If you ask me, and also my problem is this: even if I want to give a waiver, I can't give now. Yeah, because the direction is very clear. I can't have EGM. I can't have AGM, right? And 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 even if the committee want to do it, then they actually do it on their own discretion at their own risk that it cannot be approved later, right? So I'm saying to you, you have to understand non-profit is one thing that's highlighting. There's no margin of error there, right? It's actually you know how much we spend, we 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 then charge out. There's no margin of profit there. Even reserve is very limited. So I'm saying that you know. I'm urging the residential owner, right, need to be very, very, because a lot of people said, and I'm the residential tenant, can I ask for discount? Because I got lots of income. But I said, you know, you have never used your unit more than ever during lockdown. You're typically 24 hours there, you know. So you <laughs> ask me, you know, load-wise, it doesn't make sense that logically, the basis, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because you have to understand the basis of paying for your, Sinking fund and your maintenance and service charge is all on a basis that 100% required, spread it out into 12 months, and therefore you pay and take another 10% for reserve. That's all. Yeah. I think, I, I, I think, I, some of, yeah. I think where, where some of these are coming from, they say, look, you know, I, I want to discuss because I don't use the swimming pool, I don't use the gym because <laughs> of the lockdown. So that, that actually takes us into the other issue where. You know, our, our strata properties having all these common facilities is this is this even attractive anymore? So I think this is the new norm. Moving into this, you know, next part of our talk is that you know our strata properties with all these common facilities that people actually, you know, chose to go into a strata property because they want to use a pool, they want to use the gym, and all these other facilities. Now, yeah. you know, and and maybe in the future it will have limited. Uh, you have limited access to that. You see, so I think this is also a new norm that we 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 really need to see you know, where this is going to take us to. Yeah. So instead of uh, three or five swimming pools, just one now. Uh. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or maybe, you know, you're going to have to have monthly, you know, hourly rental of the entire pool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hong Kong, anybody mentioned that to you? Hey, I'm not using your tennis court. I'm not using your uh, swimming pool. Why should I pay you so much? Oh, definitely, definitely. Definitely. Oh. I think uh, this is one of, uh, this one of the hot question, the FAQ question. Coming to oh, us. Yes, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I think, I'm just curious, uh, you know, if you continue providing the swimming pool, would they actually dare to use the pool? Even even they can even they don't use the pool right now, the maintenance got to be going going on. Got to carry out the maintenance, chlorine, cleaning got to be going on. Because if not, your pool will turn green, will turn to a pond, fish pond. <laughs> and it's going to be a lot more expensive, right, to get it back into uh, working yeah. order. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. So the debate continues, lah. People are still asking you for discount. Yeah. I think. But I, I, yeah. In fact, in fact, if I can just check something with Hong Kong, tell me yeah. over this period you actually work harder than ever. 
He's going to say yes, Chris. You don't expect him to say no, right? The fact for all the property manager, manager or property management industry firm is we are risking our life to provide service to all the occupants in the buildings. So I didn't think of this. Also, it's kind of essential services, right? Frontliner. So I think, la, frontliner. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, frontliner. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Because, you know, uh, the questions are coming in and, and, you know, quite a number of them is asking about the waiver. But, uh, Chris, thanks. You have made it very clear under the SMA, yeah, uh, 2013, you know, the JMCs, they need to have an AGM on the EGM to mm -hmm. approve, right? So the question of rebate, discount waiver uh, can't just take place as and when. Correct? Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. Correct. I, no, just, I, have, I, a, I have a question for Hong Kiong, actually. Right, right. right. Yeah. Hong Kiong, sorry. Yeah. You know, I just ask you over this time, the difficulty you have with the value chain. Of course, you know, you were saying that, you know, you're you are risking your life and you're an essential service and all that. But, you know, when your lift breaks down, or the pump breaks down, or pipe gets burst, right? Did you yeah. have any difficulties trying to get those repaired during this time when you know, you know how even getting to the building or or getting spare parts. You know, you know for for those things. I I heard that you know many people couldn't get parts. They had to shut down certain aspects of their building. I think true? I think at the initial of MCO, which is in March and early April, I think this is really challenging because even some of the lift or some of the bike uh, plumbers, we call the big boss lah. We call the boss right. They say, hey, I got no workers lah how to come to your place to repair, right? So I think uh, moving forward, maybe what in, in case that there's another similar kind of uh, uh, lockdown or whatever happened, I think the service provider really, I think we need to make sure uh, essential service provider like electrical uh, plumbing really have to be there and stand by 24-7. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Again, this is one takeaway, you know, from this uh, pandemic lah. Mm. Yeah, mm. you know, the, the uh, definition of essential services, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. it's essential services for lifts like man trap, it's always been there for a hundred years. Yeah, I think yeah. the same essential services notion and that whole structure for electrical, yeah. for, for um, uh, for electric, uh, for fire services and pumps and all that, you know, it should be identified. So, in the event there's another lockdown, and I and I say that maybe the lockdown in future would be geographical rather than you know, a whole country, maybe a geographical area or a particular block of buildings get locked down. The, the, you know, the essential services must extend to the entire value chain. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Hong Kong, uh, without naming any buildings, since you, uh, you are managing AT, yeah, can you tell us, were any of those, you know, uh, did they like find any COVID-19 positive in any of those? Uh. I think there are there's one there's one or two even before lockdown even before lockdown there's a suspect uh, suspected case and I think later on it's a confirmed case. Um, so what did uh, you do? Uh, of course, when we first uh, know about it, uh, the the MOH come to us, the ambulance come to us, and then come to our buildings and they take away I mean the the, the COVID patients. So from there, uh, we carry out thorough cleaning, disinfect this and that. And I'm uh, very really fortunate and very lucky that uh, we also got a visit from uh, Office of MOH. They actually brief the residents what to have, what do they have to do, what do they have to worry and not to worry and don't over worry. Right? Leave corridor. This I think we, we carry out the disinfect as the what instruction given by MOH officer. So mm -hmm. I think uh, after that, I think uh, the residents and the owners uh, is much calmer. Uh, okay, just curious again. Uh, did this uh, uh, you know, the owners of this particular building? Did they ask for a waiver or discount? <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't think. So. I think the owner even pay more from the after that. Oh, oh okay, okay, <laughs> yeah. okay. Uh, that's good. That's good. You know, uh, that's a question, Chris. This is for you. Uh, is JMB protected? I mean, you know, it, it, you know, JMBs they they are liable, right, for action, right? So under this. Is, abnormal circumstances as what we are going through now are they protected Let, let's put it this way i mean uh, jmb and mc let's let's talk at it both at the same time now right because jmb composed of just the developer and the owners right and the mc also talking about all the owners together in a way so i'm saying to you is that there is certain personal liability being exposed under the strata management act that's granted 
right? Even before COVID and whatnot. But do they specifically protect us under the COVID? The answer is really, uh, 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 I would say that whatever is expected before, it will be there, right? But I'm just saying to you is this, um, given the new circumstances, like I said, you have to learn to protect yourself, right? Yeah. Like, for example, uh, 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 you know, in terms of following the guideline, be very thorough, be very true, all right? And, and work with your property manager, make sure that your evidence are all there. Make sure that even if they want to say you are wrong, but you have said, I've done everything I can, right? And set aside whatever that's, that's, that's possible and everything at the minimum standard. Because I do understand that at the end of the day, I do believe uh, the authority, all right, or the decision maker or the judge in this context will be able to deliberate and take to these unusual circumstances. All right. So, so I'm just saying that, you know, it's very simple. I mean, if you go back to many, many, many years ago, we have the whole core Darurat period, right? During that period, if those things happen, what happened? So I'm just saying that they will give due consideration. So we have to believe the best of humanity, but at the same time, protect yourself with evidence, with mm. proper things. Like, for example, the fact that, you know, just now we mentioned about the cert, fire cert, la, you know, any that, that we need to get or whatever. My question to you. Don't think that because MCO you don't need to do. Mm. Okay, you must keep doing, right? Do whatever you can, right? Until they really give you a no or really you cannot do it, then you keep all your evidence. So at the end of the day, the court the consideration you have to understand one thing: the judges law is one thing. The judges in Malaysia we have practiced such thing called common law, which means that in the common law system there are case law that also can help you. And there's also such thing called equity, which means that when there's a gap, right, in the circumstances, the judge can step in and make the law in a way. So I'm saying to you is that in many ways we are protected. We must have the best faith. Of course, if you said strictly, the answer is no. Lah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, Chris, uh, this is uh, also for you. This is uh, one of the, the questions that are coming in. Right. Uh, we talk about, you know, holding AGM, EGM. Right now, everything is done physically, right? But yep. if the pandemic will to continue until like end of the year or whatever, and uh, a physical AGM, EGM cannot be held. Of course, then we talk about, you know, going online. Lah. But if people are uh, a demon of not going online, I can't do it, I don't do it, uh, I don't care, you know, and they don't hold the AGM, EGM, can they be penalized? Oh, let's put it this way. If you ask me at this moment, uh, already the direction or the guideline uh, is very clear. You can't be having your EGM and AGM. All right. Uh, so I'm saying to you is that because the law, number one, have expect physical participation, right? There are notice, compliance and everything. They, they expect physical compliance. And how do we track your attendance and blah, blah, blah. That kind of thing are already in place on the pretext that we need a physical AGM. All right. right. So what I'm saying to you is that there's two things to, to, to look at, all right? Number one, the law must be amended. If the law is not amended, obviously you can't, right? Number two is that probably the, the ministry or the, the controller of housing or, or, or the COB can step in to suspend certain law to facilitate certain thing with proper SOP because I have a problem with infrastructure. I really have, right? I want to tell everyone. Everyone keeps saying online, 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 online. But I'm saying to you is that how stable is online? Correct? Right? Does it mean that everyone is online? I also don't know. For example, we talk about more the middle class, the middle upper class kind of uh, neighborhood of a strata building, obviously expecting everyone has. Correct? But let's talk about the low cost. Affordable housing. Right? Are we expecting that everyone can do it? So then for, because there's an issue of access. I mean, I can do online, but what if you do online, only 50% can vote, 50% can attend. Right? Out of 50%, not even 50% will attend. Let's put it this way. Right? So this is the question of whether you can reach out to the maximum. It's the same concept and consideration we need to think. Because one thing about our infra, for example, I really want to say one thing. One thing that I'm trying to also try is so while we're trying to do online, we face that there's plenty of uh, interference. All right? Because our online system, our Wi-Fi or whatever, internet, have never tried that so many people can go out online at the same time. You know, that is also straining the system. So I'm saying to you, a lot of this problem need to be addressed. Sure. Uh, of course, I always say one more thing is this. 
if your decision making is correct, if your decision is accepted and being re re reasonable and everything else, and nobody wants to challenge that. All right. For example, we say, okay, let's agree that we waive the entire service charge for one year. Mm. Uh, for example, <laughs> right? And if really nobody is challenging, then the again is that would this case then go to the court? Yeah. Of course, yeah. but if as long as one person not happy, he can still do it. Right, okay. but I'm saying to you, these are the guidelines we need. Okay, okay. So, uh, again, you know, just to summarize and correct me if I'm wrong. So, the law as it now stands does not provide for an online AGM or EGM. Yes. Right? Yes. yes. But the authorities can, if they want to, and if they deem that it is necessary, they can do something about it. Yes. Yeah, okay. So, that means, uh, you know, if MCO is not uh, lifted, and, you know, social distancing is still the order of the day. Uh, it looks like, you know, a lot of AGMs and EGMs uh, will be postponed. Mm. Is that right? Yes. yes. Yeah. It's yeah. already okay. happening at the moment. Yes. Okay. Job, right? I think just to, yeah. just to add uh, one more point, we actually uh, have developed a, a very simple virtual AGM system. So we actually present it to COB KL. All right. So in this case, I think the COB also said, under the law, we can't do it for the moments because nobody can the, the room. So we really hope certain practical kind of solution can, can be developed yeah. in a fast manner. Yeah. So meaning no la the answer from them is no. Yeah. Yeah. Because any oh. you know, anybody were to take it to court, then somebody will have to like take the rap, you see. Especially when oh, you do so. a video to <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. so very right lies the situation where now if you really need to dip into your sinking fund to make some you emergency can't. repairs, you want to, you, you know, emergency repairs now, safety issues, you know, you got to go and really fix something now. So what do you do? I, I will say on practical wise, let's, I think communication is very important. Let's communicate with all the strata owner in the developments. Okay, looks mm -hmm. now we have a breakdown of a leaf. Mm -hmm. People can go out to their homes. Right, and mm. we have this situation. Our cash flow is now like this, and our sinking price is now like this. Let's explain to them. I think a lot of the things that can be solved via uh, strict communication and clear communication with all the strata owners. I think most of the owner, I would say ninety nine percent, they are understanding. Yeah, mm, I see. So <laughs> communication is important. Yes, mm. I, I would say one thing is that I mean, if you talk about law, is hard and fast, uh, basically, right? Mm. They will say black and white. It say that this cannot means cannot. Simple, right? If you ask me the answer. But I'm saying to you again, I said if I do a waiver for one year, nobody will complain. So what 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 is the whole idea? And it is for the common good of everyone. If you do it, you know, it will be happy. You have to understand because the liability of the JMB and the MC of the member is the same thing. You know what I want to highlight? You do also wrong, you don't do also wrong, or potentially. <laughs> so, Correct? so what do you do? Resign. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't resign also. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just yeah. Saying, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, it, it's very interesting because we've been talking about, you know, people asking for waiver, asking for discount, you know, because they can't uh, access the, the amenities uh, and facilities in, in a, a particular project, right? So that's a question actually that came in. Uh, it, it's actually on the other side of the fence, you know. If the JMB, this must be a very good JMB, lah, you know, very, uh, you know, with foresight. They think that they need to spend more money because, you know, there's a lot of things that's uh, going on now, a lot more cleaning, for example, and they want to set uh, aside more fund. Can they do it in the absence of an AGM? Not cutting, <laughs> but they want to set up a fund, maybe. Can they extra do it? Extra to collect again yeah. or what? Yeah, yeah. correct. Yeah. Yeah. To collect extra, is it? Yeah, correct. Yes. Okay, because they see the it? need. Yeah. I think legally and practical wise, at this moment, it's not really good to do that, all right? Because I think people are suffering economic wise, uh, uh, right? Or then may maybe some of them are not able to pay a full service charge. And okay. I think let's prioritize the projects. Certain capex sure. maybe can be KIV, right? Certain sure. capex KIV and certain capex can be postponed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that that's really good because sorry, uh, Chris, just uh, before that. That's really good because we are talking about the reality. But what about the legality of it? If they want to do it, you know, can they do it, Chris? Okay, yeah. Um, I put it very simple. The legality of it is no again. 
right? Like I said, you know, if it's not presented properly, if you cannot have a proper meeting to endorse it, if it's not communicated, and if it's not evidence in a way whereby everyone's agreed, then you are subject to challenge, right? Okay. But let's put it this way. I have a solution also. My solution, if you really, really need to do it, and it's really, really critical, you know, what happens is that we can run like a charity, you know? Yeah. So I'm saying to you, uh, we do a fundraising, but not call it in the name of service charge imposed on everyone, right? Sure. So those people who agree, give a $1,000. Those people who don't agree, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We just do and fix it first. Then later, we deal with it. Uh, I see. There's a community spirit. Uh. Uh, correct. Um, this is the Rukun Tetangga thing. I help you, you help me. There's something I learned from boss school, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but in reality, again, uh, Hong Kong, does this community, you know, Rukun Tetangga, you help me, I help you, spirit. Uh, well, I, think I, 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 I find during this entry, you know, the Rukun Tetangga spirit really improved a lot, mm. right? I'm really happy to see that owners are communicating to, communicating to each other, they share contact, they share contact to buy uh, Musang King, Star Fruits, that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> so I think wow. really now to buy Gatupa, to buy Lemang, this, I think it's very good, uh, what I call, there's a, there's a spirit of strata living. Uh, finally, we can mm -hmm. see. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that, that's that's uh, very encouraging. Now, mm -hmm. uh, Hong Kong, do you employ, or maybe not you, you know, your contractors, are you aware that they actually, uh, some of them might be falling back on foreign workers, right? Yeah. I mean, naturally, right? So yeah. how do you ascertain that, you know, uh, all workers, let, let's not just point at foreign workers, la. all the, the contracted uh, services, yeah, the workers, all of them are, are clear of COVID. Okay, I think there are, there are two parts here. One is the foreign one, one is the local one. Yeah. There's a, there's a law, there's a SOP or guidelines earlier that all the uh, foreign workers must go carry out COVID test. Then after that, subsequently they say, okay, uh, they will prioritize construction first. Because we know that in our, in our industry, usually security and cleanings, they use we use a lot of foreigners, right? So I think the point here is like this: if we send them to, to carry out COVID test today, right? They go and test, okay? The result will be out tomorrow. How sure are we after after they carry out the test, they will still go home, right? They still go back to their hostel, and we all know how how bad is the hostel sometimes. It could it could be 10, 15 of them in in there. So maybe next day when they come back, the risk is there. So I think the practical point is, let's say we, after the workers, right, carry out COVID test, it will be good that we really consider, give them a, a place to stay, right, so that we can actually uh, reduce the risk of spreading. Because we confirm, okay, this group of workers doesn't have COVID, let's sort of quarantine them in a safe place. But mm. I think it's not easy, right? Because- No, I want to say Hong Kong is there's no end, you know why? All right, mm. yes, from yeah. testing until next day, he go back to work, all right? Yeah. He's isolated, he's fine, but the, the, the next day, he still need to go back somewhere <laughs> unless you continue quarantine him. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah Some yeah. of the yeah. they actually give a very good idea, which they say, okay, it doesn't matter since we have a lot of uh, common facilities like multi-purpose hall or some other storeroom or whatever. Why not we actually give them a, this space for, this, for the time being so that they can be quarantined and work at the same time, so that they don't have to mix around with their friends or whoever, so they can reduce the risk. I think that's one of the good ideas as well. Mm. But was that ever executed? I mean, it's like, you know, I, I want to go back to my family, you know? I don't do see Hong Kong space every day. <laughs> I, think, I think for, for foreign workers, they are be more than happy to do that. Just that uh, JMB also have, JMC also have their, their view. Some of them, they agree, some of them disagree. So I think you still got to deliberate among themselves. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, let, let's talk a little bit about uh, the uh, short-term rentals, the Airbnb. You know mm -hmm. that, uh, I mean, of late, uh, increasingly, so a lot of the, especially strata uh, units, you know, in the Klang Valley, they are actually being rented out uh, on a short-term rental basis. Yeah. In, in fact, you know, some buildings have, uh, you know, they're very open about it. And the GMB, you know, everybody agrees, right? So yeah. what does this pandemic mean, you know, to the operation of A, B, and B services? What does it mean? What, um, what, I, what will change and what have changed, yeah? If I can take it up first, uh, sure. well, based on the KPKP guideline, uh, it should latest one, uh, 20th of May, uh, 
right? Uh, they say that the short-term rental for all intents and purposes are only allowed uh, under that there's a presumption commercial. It must be a commercial uh, strata, right? Or a landed strata. Landed strata, yeah. Or landed strata, yeah. which means that landed residential strata, yes, right? But not a uh, uh, high-rise strata uh, residential, right? So, so it has indirectly confirmed a position by KPKT to say that so what we are asking now is effectively on the commercial side, on the commercial side. But then mm. I'm saying to you is that, uh, again, self-regulation is one thing and one guideline is one thing, whether it's legal or not legal, it's also a question because if I'm the owner, right, I said, hey, you mean now I cannot ask my, my short-term tenant to go in, for example, in relation to that. So I just want to highlight to start by saying that there's a guideline that clearly said commercial uh, strata plus the fact that lender strata. All right, so Chris, yeah. Chris, when you say commercial strata, can you clarify that? Because service apartments, that's commercial strata, right? Yeah. The service apartments are the only yes. ones that technically, but yeah. actually now even the previous rules before the new KPKT rules that you can only run Airbnb for for uh, in, in, in strata, in service apartments anyway, right? Yeah. So nothing yeah. has changed. Oh, no, 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 so no, nothing no, has no, changed, no, right? No, no, no. No, no, I just want to highlight one thing is this, fine, but every local authority have different rules in relation mm. to Airbnb, right? Mm. So I'm just highlighting right now, uh, uh, we have a federal agency issuing uh, uh, a guideline to tell you that, hey, uh, this is commercial and whatnot, which is very unrarely because they always leave it to the local authority in terms of enforcement. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. but okay, uh, great. But in terms of like running uh, managing a building, Hong Kong, right? Yep. Uh, with A, B, and B. In view of the current circumstances and moving forward, the new normal, what will have to change? I think definitely uh, we need to have a very stringent SOP. Even though before this, we also we already have a very stringent, stringent SOP to handle A, B, and B buildings, right? Because whether we like it or not, the building cannot be 100% Airbnb. Somehow they will still have owner occupied or tenant occupied. Maybe you can have, have about 60%, almost 70%. So I think we need to protect the interest, the safety of the occupants in the building itself. Okay, so I think uh, uh, what they call distancing as far as to confirm who are your guests, where are they from, all this has to be in place even more stringent after this. Right? Because some of the Airbnb operator, of course we know that if they say the building is can allow Airbnb to operate, usually it's handled by the operator. So we need to work more closely with operator. And I also appear that all uh, Airbnb operator, please, I think we need to work together to ensure public uh, safety, public health safety, so that we, not to say we, we, work, we want to jam your business or why, but I think this is for the benefit of the publics. All right? Yeah. So we need to come up with certain things, which is, again, practical, right? So that we can have uh, win-win situations. Yeah. Maybe you can help us understand you a little bit better, you know, uh, articulate exactly what you mean. Mm. What would be a win-win situation here? Okay, for example, usually your Airbnb, sometimes even though they say, okay, one, one uh, two bedrooms apartment, the most you can rent out to four to five percent, okay? But somehow, uh, the jury, jury kind of mindset, uh, they rent out to <laughs> 10 people, eight people to a party in there. Okay, so I think we need to be more, uh, we have more knowledge about this. Uh, who are your guests? What is the purpose? So we need cooperation from them, right? Yeah. Somehow we cannot to have all these people come and stay and they hold a big party in the middle of the night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so we are talking about cooperation, not just, you know, from the uh, Airbnb operators, but also owners as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. And also, so, whoever want, wanted to uh, opt this uh, Airbnb service, the tenant as yeah. well. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, assuming, you know, nobody bothers, lah, huh? everybody you know, just continue doing what they've been doing before. You know, a small apartment, you have 10 people and something, you know, happened, you know, a COVID case. Can, can, uh, can, can it be taken up as a, a legal case, uh, uh, Chris? Can anybody be sued? Let's, let's put it this way. If, if, for example, I'm just saying that number one, uh, under the latest KPKT guideline related to short term rental, which I've read, basically it's still three things you need to practice, notwithstanding your commercial and lender strata, still three things you need to do. One, social distancing. Number two, you still need to do disinfection, right? And the third one, you still need to trace them, tracing, 
right? So these three things still need to be in place. I mean, doesn't matter whether you're residential or non-residential, already they have mentioned this type of thing. Now, whether the suing thing and whatever that kind of thing, again, uh, uh, like I say, it's a commercial activity, right? To me, if we can trace it, then we know who to sue. Uh. You, you let's put it this way. If we don't do the three things, we can't even sue, right? Then the next question is this. If really there's a COVID-19 and it's got infection, it's spread because of the next group of people coming into the same unit, for example. Then the next question, is the owner disinfecting or not? Because there's a guideline for the owner to actually disinfect. If they're they not proof that they disinfect the place or not up to a certain standard, then obviously the liability go back to the owner because the, 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 the issue then, what if then they've done it, then again, then it's subject to proving, right? But I would say, yes, somebody will have to be responsible, right? Depends who can have the, the blame or who can actually uh, go to the root of the causation. Is it because of the property manager who don't do it properly, right? Is it the guard didn't actually track it properly, right, which you outsource, right? Is it the owner or the agent who's running the Airbnb not doing well? Right, and then properly, properly, and then there's no disinfection, not up to the mark. All these are subject to dispute, but somebody will have to be responsible. But one yeah. thing about, about this, I want to highlight one thing is this the red, the last thing we want is one case of COVID 19. If yeah. you have one case of COVID 19, it impacts the entire thing. So that's why mm -hmm. it is not just the owner, it is the JMB, it is the MC, it's like every other owner of the entire thing must cross guard each other, right? If I see that this room is supposed to have four people and it suddenly got 40 people inside, I must also make noise. Because yep. if I don't, and if it's exposed, uh, it's impacting everyone, right? You really won't want to rent to a place that they have a COVID-19 case, correct? And probably tomorrow there could be PKPD, you know, all the fencing against your whole apartment and you don't want that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So I, I think, you know, something that's really important to take note of, uh, you know, by, by residents and, and owners and even property managers and a, a B and b operators, right? What this could mean uh, if anybody were to fail in his or her responsibility, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yes. interesting. Yeah. Uh, so just, there, there's a question that just came in. Uh, you know, this is basically about services, la, Hong Kong. Uh, Interfloor leakages, lah. Huh? Uh, you know, in, in this time of uh, CMCO, you know, and if the uh, the party that's responsible uh, doesn't cooperate, lah, you know, what is going to happen? Is, is it going to be any different from those days when uh, you know there's no pandemic? Life goes on, right? I think interfloor leaking leakage is the it traditional problems in property management. I think yeah. not only in future, okay? Uh, thank God that right now we have a more stringent rules to enforce, to ask our owner to be cooperated. But again, I think right now also we are, everyone is facing the problems, right? Maybe the number is smaller right now, but all we need is only one case that is good enough. You have an uncooperative owner, they don't want to give you access, run you access, even though the, the law says we as a property manager, uh, JMB and have the right to access to your units, but if they say they don't want to go into the units, to do allow us access, there is not a solution. But again, uh, I think we need to explain to all the owners. It, it can happen to you one day. Your upstairs can lead to you one day, right? So I think awareness, uh, uh, what they call uh, no, uh, mindset, is a is a is a long uh, long term battle. We need to keep explaining to owners and make the industry more mature, and eventually it will be good for the uh, yeah. entire industry. So we are talking about communication again. Yes. Communication. Uh. Yeah. So there's, there's no like uh, black or, 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 or white. Uh. I mean, you know, they're supposed to do it, but they, they don't budge, right? So what can you do? Is that what we're saying? Is there any yeah. way out of this? Again, let's say the leakage or the leaking is very, very serious. It's like a downfall under, underneath the unit, uh, right? Yeah. The riser is in our, in our control. The water riser is in our control. I see. Right? I didn't say anything. But I said the water riser, the electric riser is in our control. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, I, I'm very interested to find out in, in the indoor air quality of buildings, you know, post uh, a lockdown, you know, and, and we are talking about buildings that are probably not inhabited. Lah. Yeah. More that than anything else. Maybe, Anthony, you want to share with us? 
uh, you know, you would have seen a lot of this. Even yeah, before yeah. pandemic, we, we I, I suppose we do already have a problem. But now, mm. you know, with this pandemic, uh, yeah, how bad is it? Well, well, now we are moving away from the strata, say, because, you know, the strata homes, everybody was staying at home. So now, you know, as, as we reopen and we are powering up, we're going back to our workplaces. Yeah. So I think yeah. if, you, if you take an office, for example, many offices are central air conditioned. And in the time when the central air conditioned was switched off, I can tell you that there are no buildings, you know, anywhere that I know would have designed and say, look, we've designed this place so that we can have a two month shutdown. No one, no one would have contemplated that. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, and offices particularly lifts were shut off and also uh, the, oh, many services were shut down. And when, when people go back in again, you must realize that, you know, the air conditioning, when you shut down for two months, a lot of things dry up. And our main concern is actually on legionnaires and, and, and other things that are, in the building because there's no fresh air in the building. So, so if, if, if we as architects and contractors, when we build new buildings, we, when we commission it, we often flush the air. The air and the piping system has to be flushed. And this thing takes time and it's not done just like a normal maintenance. This is actually like recommissioning a building. So this is why we're saying that the indoor air quality, indoor water quality, and, and other issues in, in buildings when you shut down needs to be considered because every building has, is slightly different. But I would say that if you say uh, your, if you have your own floor and you control your own air conditioning, because offices you do control your own air conditioning, the first thing I would do is that you know go back in, open all the windows, and you know run the air conditioning, uh, you know for a couple of days with all the windows open. You know don't start work immediately because the air in there is probably filled with formaldehydes and other other things that could be in there. Yeah. So and without right, you know really get people to come in and have a look at them. Because you know the effects on your health is quite is quite bad in those things. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just want to highlight one thing, Anthony. It's not just the office. Even in mm. residential property, you talk about common property, the common facility, yes. the gym, for example. Uh, because nobody can use the gym, uh, the, yeah. the the management probably lock it down for two months, yes. right? Yeah. And and never open it up and everything and all the meeting rooms, for example, and any other funny common facility for that matter. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. I think I think it's real. Uh, I'm just saying to you is that uh, not just office, right? I'm thinking even in a strata situation, to me, you know, uh, nobody used the gym for two months. Right? Yeah. Yes. Nobody used the whatever for two months. The aircon is also not up. So I'm saying to you is that I think the indoor air quality thing is real, right? And then it could be already moldy anyway. Probably on mm -hmm. check, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so we are we are we are looking at enclosed areas, lah. I mean, you're right, lah, Chris. I mean, in residential uh, projects, sometimes you have your theaters, you have your libraries, you have your kindergartens and stuff like that, right? Study okay. room. Yeah, sure. So basically, uh, uh, what would be the worst case scenario? I mean, what could happen if the air is so bad? What could happen? What would be the impact on health? Anthony, you want to? Yeah. You know, I think, you, I think everyone has seen the viral video uh, going around with the mole. I think that that would be an impact where, you know, you can see those you can see. I'm always concerned about what you can't see and what you can smell, uh, which are things like formaldehydes and things like that. Sadly, because with indoor air quality, you know, it's not so graphic like a sickness like Ebola or, or even like, you know, when people drew the COVID virus, you can see what the virus looks like. But when it comes to indoor air quality, it's not very visual. So people tend to not bother, you know, and, and when you go back to your old place, it's like, oh, this place smells familiar, but they don't realize the smell is actually not good for them, you know. So, so I, I think it's, it's, it's a situation where what you can't see, can't hurt you, may hurt you. Okay, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, and, and most of these rooms that you, that you, that you may not even realize the, the services you never walk into. You don't walk into areas of the services at all. Most of the people who use buildings don't realize that there's a big thing at the roof or there's some pumps here and there. You know, my, my concern is actually the fact that it's so incremental that you get used to this kind of things. And over time, it actually gets to you. Mm. Okay. Uh, you know, for, for the sake of many out there, including, you know, laymen like myself, uh, when you say it gets to you, what kind of sickness are we talking about? What kind of damage to uh, to health? Respiratory, three systems, immune systems. Um, you know those those will be the two main ones. Okay, because mold is definitely respiratory. You know, yeah. So it's right, you know, right. 
I, I think those remind everyone people, COVID is also respiratory. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, okay, uh, you know, you said something that's really interesting. You said that, you know, that buildings now, they are actually not designed to withstand a lockdown mm. the way that, you know, we are, we are uh, encountering now. Uh, moving forward, do you see a change in that? I mean, I, I cannot imagine a building that's designed to uh, endure a lockdown. Is that even possible? Um, look, currently now we are our, you know, our working brief in, in most buildings would be based on efficiency. Say yeah. if you did an air conditioning, you will say, look, okay, maybe I have certain chillers or certain equipment. I may power up when the building is full. So it's running at that capacity. And what happens is that, um, you may have smaller equipment that you may run after hours. You know, you've heard of people saying, look, after hours, the air conditioning load is lesser. So I could power down and use smaller equipment. But currently now, when you talk about total total shutdown, is that everything just shuts down. So if you think about it, there's nothing too difficult about it, right? I just switch it off and switch it on again. It's like a split aircon, right? I finish the work, I go away for a long weekend, I switch it off and switch it back on again. But the issues is that when we go for a long lockdown and you switch off certain equipment in buildings, they are now all congested. That means water and chillers and, and things are now within the pipes. Whereas these things here are supposed to be running all the time. So if you if you shut it down for a weekend, probably okay. But two months, then it starts to accumulate stuffs in areas that it's not meant to do. One of the areas would be the cooling towers on the ceiling in, in the roof. You know, if, if you shut everything down, nobody maintaining it, it dries up. And you know what happens in roofs, it starts gets moldy and fungus. So these are always the kind of telltale signs that it can go into a legionnaire's disease kind of uh, environment. Uh, and it does happen, and it has happened in in in, in Malaysia. So so I think that uh, the areas that we have to be very careful as far as lockdown is concerned. In future, moving forward, how would buildings be designed for lockdown? Currently, now you know we've set up committees and just just trying to work out you know what what does it mean now? So I think is it is it like having redundant equipment? Are you saying look you know in the event of a lockdown, I could just maybe have the fresh air running, or maybe I could just run a system. Uh, partially so that I could I could just still maintain the equipment without having to power it fully up. The technology is really there. The only thing is that now it's having to put that as a criteria. Existing buildings, I think, would be very tough. But I think moving forward, newer buildings, they would be taking into these considerations. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know about vertical transport because currently now, if you talk about social distancing, it really messes up the, 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 the speed of how people are supposed to move up, up and down the buildings. I don't know, maybe in future, there'll be less people in buildings. So these issues might go away. You know, who, who knows, you know, now with working from home and all that, I have already now a lot of issues with people coming into offices, having to queue up in corridors. And because, you know, there's only three or four that can go into the lift at the same time. So now the corridors become congested. So people are now queuing up outside office corridors. And then when people come down, they move straight into a crowd. So there's all these kind of new dynamics that that you know people mm -hmm. you know think so it's no longer about solving or oh, touchless buttons or, or all those other technology now it's physical space people just need to get up and down buildings if you have a 50 story building a 70 story building you know different zones and different speeds and all that you know right. yeah mm -hmm. so I, I think this is all um uh going to be going to be challenges that we're going to face. Right, right. So this is the reality yeah, of, of what yes. it means. Yes, uh, sorry, Hong Kong. I want to share what Anthony have mentioned just now. I have a very, uh, one or two JMB, which is very practical. They act, they come and ask me, they say, uh, Hong Kong, we all do all the control at the front gate. So all the owners, all the tenants, they cannot go up there because of distancing kind of rules. The lift can only take four or five people. Okay. What if the owner up there, they want to move in the floor? between level 5 to level 13. We have no control on every floor. So mm -hmm. are we doing for sure or are we, are we doing just because everybody is doing it on practical mm -hmm. side? So I think, again, a cooperation from awareness from all the occupants in the buildings is very, very important. If you look, if you are if you are up there, you you know you, you look at the lift, probably you have four or five people, then you just don't go in. If you choose mm -hmm. to go in, there is your, your own risk or you can even bring a risk to other people. So I think the mm. awareness must be there. Mm. 
I think the, again, like if you live in an apartment, people know each other. I think that that's okay. You know, you 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 know, moving among neighbors, you know that you know you know your friends and your neighbors. But I think in office buildings, and depending on what kind of office buildings, some have a lot of visitors in and out. You know, you get a lot of change of people moving in, moving out. You know, faces that you don't see. You go to yeah. another floor. You know, you see people all the time, the same people all the time. So I think you know when you talk about office buildings and other types of commercial buildings, you get a flow of very very different type of people. And then also the servicing. You know, when you're talking about the servicing, people that you don't see, you know, coming up the service lifts and so forth. And yeah. I can tell you, how can you do social distancing in a service lift when you got a cart and you know how how can you, it's impossible. Yeah. So so I think you you know your 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 some of your MCs are absolutely spot on. A lot of this are done for show in the front. I mean, uh, we we are now you know another hat that I wear is a contractor. It's it's not practical where you go to the site, workers are wearing masks, but having to alert each other to say look tapi tapi you know or, or jaga jaga. But now they pick because you know you have the mask on and <laughs> social distancing when you're trying to 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 cast concrete. <laughs> One guy is here. One guy is the other. You know, they all they all, they all huddle together, casting concrete, doing form work. So the show is actually at the front. That you know, you all put. You're you know, right. Yeah. 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 You go into the side. It's it's entirely a different thing. Practical quality yeah. prevails. Yeah. 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 Sure. Yeah. Interesting. I just want to say that you know, uh, actually, the show thing is important. Right, equally. Right. You know why? Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, just because you wear a mask doesn't mean that you won't get it. Mm. Okay, just put it this way. But we are required to wear a mask, like a awareness campaign. So if everyone see everyone else wearing a mask, right? Uh, even though it's not practical, at the end of the day, we just thought that you know there is certain sort of respect and spread the awareness. So yeah. I think uh, we need a show sometime because uh, we need the ceremony to feel that we graduate, right? We need a ceremony to feel that we are in a new normal. So I'm just saying that, you know, I, I'm all for the show, right? But I do know that it's not foolproof. Yeah, okay. Uh, you know, there, there's one question uh, that came in from uh, yeah, a new mother, uh, a young mother, uh, who's worried about her child going to daycare and kindergarten because, you know, yeah, uh, you have a lot of like people moving in and out. Uh, maybe, you know, either Hong Kiong or Anthony, can you advise, like, I mean, what would and what should a kindergarten or daycare be doing? Yeah. I, I think there has never been a safer time to send your kid to daycare. Because, you know, before, when you send your kid to daycare, cough, colds, children get sent there. You know, how, how often do you see that the parents... Turn uh, the the, head, you know, the the person who's at the gate there. Turn your children away and say, "Look, no, your child has a cold. Go home. You can't come in." You know, and the kid and, and the kid is standing there, and the mom and dad is going to work and dropping them at the daycare. You want to turn the mom away and say, "Look, take your kid home now." <laughs> but now, with the awareness of COVID, you know, um, it's never been a bad, safer time to send them there. That that's my opinion, like, You know, at least you know for that time, because I think current, currently now people will turn you away. You know, they say, look, don't come if you're not feeling well. If you've got a cough and cold, and children have a lot of cough and colds. Uh, so, you know, how, so I, I think if, if you ask me from that perspective, yes, of course, the, the, there's always a risk when, you, when you're mixing with other children and, and, and in, in that kind of environment. There's always going to be the risk even before COVID. But I think with the awareness today, I think, you know, uh, it's probably, uh, you know, no worse. No worse the risk than, than, than before. Yeah. Okay. Got to make sure that, you know, uh, the, the person running the outfit uh, uh, is firm enough to do that. Lah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, but before, know, I don't think they had temperature scanning for kids, right, at, at daycare. Yeah. I think they do it, you see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, this, this new normal thingy, uh, it, you know, gets uh, a lot of people, most people, rethinking, recalibrating and reinventing, right? So in terms of the management and maintenance of buildings and also facilities, right? What does that mean? You know, Hong Kong, you would have thought about it a lot, I'm sure. 80 buildings, yes, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think, I think again, go back to the, the priority right, right now is go back to the safety and security of the occupants in the buildings. Okay, we need to carry it. We need to make sure all this uh, equipments are safe to use. Okay, and always on standby that in case of any emergency, that 
the equipments, the features can be functional. For example, like fire fighting. Make sure that even though for the last two months, certain service provider might not be able to carry out servicing, but we ourselves, we have our technician, right? I think everyone running property management, we have our own technician. Please make sure we have an eye on it, or on standby mode, or on auto mode. Don't ever bypass or turn it off because we are risking a thousand of life in the buildings. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right, right. But yeah. uh, uh, are we seeing that, you know, in the past, this has been uh, put into practice, but now with the current situation, it has to be yeah. uh, enhanced. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So besides that, you know, what about like uh, balancing the cost of managing the the building, you know, uh, versus, uh, you know, something that you must keep in a kitty uh, for rainy days, such as, you know, the pandemic that we are going through now. How do you balance the cost? I mean, right now, your your uh, yes. cost, yeah, would have gone up, right? Certainly. Yeah, yeah. your staff cost would have gone up, right? I mean, people Can have to a lot more. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How do you balance that? You know, uh, you know, how do you how do you ensure that the quality is still there, but yet you are uh, adequately prepared for something like that? Okay, you see, before the before the NPO, before the pandemic, we all know that we use clean cleaners to clean buildings, right? Whatever material we use, we deem that okay, these are the good material or whatever this uh, the, 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 the the what they call disinfectant uh, is safe. But hmm. right now. We, we should really go and screen, go and check uh, if the material really adequate to clean our buildings. Are you short us? Are you mixing with a lot of others, water or whatever kind of things, so that we wouldn't we, we do not want to compromise the quality of cleaning right now because it's the utmost important in the buildings. Our leaf button, all right, our leaf door, our corridor is the most, most important. I can I have seen a lot of occupants that they're not even hold the handle, they do not even touch the button. Right, so they use key, and which will eventually have another set of cost to repair, right? Because it will damage certain equipments. So I think uh, <laughs> we need to make sure we keep an eye on all these service providers at all times. Right, right. So you know, yeah. uh, actually, there's a related question that just came in. You know, what about residents who are demon? You know, uh, not keeping to the SOPs of uh, social distancing. How, mm. what, what do you do? I mean, you know, uh, what call can you do? Huh? Call, call the balai. Call the nearest balai. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I think, I think we, no, we, we do that. Not. Is that we do, we do have case, but I think we need to give constant reminders and mm. uh, what they call awareness kind of info to owners. If they're really stubborn or whatever reason, then I think we have no choice but to call the authority. Okay, mm. I think there is there's there are a lot of exceptional cases. For example, this certain people have certain medical kind of uh, what they call medical uh, certifications that they need to be in the pool every day for five minutes. Really? Okay. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I got that, and it's certified by a qualified doctor. Okay, oh. the community actually came up with practical solutions. Let's bring this letter to police station, all right, and get acknowledged, and we really we enforce five minutes within five minutes. I think that it's due to medical kind of uh, uh, necessity. Necessity. Mm. Right, right. So yeah, uh, going to the authorities is the answer, lah. Dealing with this errant uh, people, right? Stubborn mm. people. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, the other two gentlemen, Anthony and Chris, do you want to add on uh, to that before we move on to uh, our next question? No, yeah. I, I just, uh, the new norm of managing norm, uh, yeah. buildings. Yeah. yeah. I think the new norm, as far as priority, not you know, the basic foundation has not changed. The only thing that now you need to emphasize and prioritize those things, you know, more critically. So that that would be, you know, you know, the buildings have, in Malaysian buildings have actually are designed very well. The services are all designed very well. All the SOPs are there for for renewals and inspections and everything. It's just that you know we let sometimes we drop the ball and and we we kind of push it a little bit further, push it a bit further. And, and if you can't predict when the next shut lockdown is going to be. So if you're doing it all well and the building is running well, like I said, you know, even if you have a sudden point where you can't get to certain parts, you can, you can tell that the chances of breakdown will be less and the chances of new exposure to real danger can be less. Firefighting mm -hmm. and electrical equipment, lift, these are those few fundamental things that, that you know, must not take a back. Mm. Yes, Chris? 
This is, uh, I, I think, let's put it this way. The fact that the word we use is management, all right? Although we say property management, if you can ask Hong Kong, effectively it's human management more than anything else. Mm. Correct? So so while the basic need to be there, which we always say the science of it, then the art of it is also important, right? In the sense that how do you then uh, add on to the pressure and for compliance and awareness and everything else? For example, I mean, authority, even we can complain, they are still very far away. In a sense, you know, they won't come out and show up and say, no, you don't come in. What if they still budge you in? What do you do? Right? And, and, and still before you complain, I always say the Balai's gate is quite far. Right? <laughs> so I'm saying to you is that if that's the case, then uh, again, uh, I would just want to advise everyone for that matter, common sense prevail. If you can't stop them, record them. How about that? Right? Mm. Create evidence. And today, recording devices everywhere. You hold one every day. Correct. So take a photo, take a whatever, take a, some record. At least we know we can trace the problem, right? So I guess at the end of the day, we need to learn how to live with each other. Social distancing gets us closer, not further, right? But as the meantime, I think the devil is always in the details. While we can say that, you know, the building must be perfect condition, mean condition, it's the usage of the building that's always causing the problem. The five minutes uh, dipping in the pool. Come on, man. We never expect that will happen, but yes, it's happened. Uh, right? Yeah. So I'm saying to you, what do you do? Correct? So mm. when you deal with these kind of new circumstances, I'm sure in the 80 property that Hong Kong is managing, right, they are more weird than just five minutes dipping in the pool. So I don't know. Right? So yeah. what do you do with it? Is the human communication. It's really, you know, at the end of the day, let's be human about it. Right? Yeah. And, and I think that's the key to management. We never actually pay attention to this too much. But moving forward, even for our award, even for whatever they want to do, we must actually put a little bit more focus. Communication, like I said, you know, how do you communicate a sad news? How do you communicate, actually, uh, we have a COVID-19 positive tenant now. So what do you do? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, well, this one, you know, I'd I, I like to go around, but I'd I like to start with Anthony. Uh, mm. Time is uh, getting short. Mm. Share with us, Anthony, your idea of an ideal home or building mm. that pandemic proof or mm. is it a dream? Is it a fallacy? Can it be real? <laughs> yeah, you know, we, we, during the MCO, you know, a lot of a lot of stories, you know, uh, because a lot of time to talk about this. So there's uh -huh. been uh, building a bunker out in Kara, you know. Uh, <laughs> chickens and vegetables and uh, things like that you know it's almost like a nuclear bunker you know so yeah. Yeah, I think different houses for different causes i i personally you know uh, have stayed away from strata properties because you know i i find you know i have a choice now that i'm living in a you know in a landed property so the, throughout the mco period you know we were considering that what were the things that um you know if this were to happen again you know so I think the areas that we would say is that, you know, we really need to find a place where you have a good community. I think, you know, because you are, you're, you're already not going out, the community is very important. So whether you are in a condo community or whether you are in a uh, landed community, you know, having the friends and people that you, that you can hang out with is very, very important. Yeah. So I think in, in my choice, you know, I think your neighbors make, making harmonious and, and friendly neighbors would be very important. It's a community. What about you, Chris? I, I suppose you just say what I said just now. It's not about the building. It's about the community, correct? It's yeah. about the people, right? But I'm just highlighting another very important thing is that we are facing an enemy that we cannot see. We cannot smell. We cannot mm. sense. It's beyond mm. our senses. So my question is that how do you take on something where we design a physical thing which you can see and touch and feel, which is a property, <laughs> all right, uh, uh, to withstand something that we cannot see? So I'm saying to you, it's always almost impossible Right. If you want to go to that much of details, then I, I just have to say one thing, live with COVID-19. In fact, live with COVID-20, COVID-21, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. And uh, last but not least, Hong Kiong, I after think... all the, the, the feedback, the interaction, the communication you've been having with your tenant, you know, with your JMBs and your MCs. I think let's align together. Not only property manager, JMB, MC, residence owner, tenant, visitors, grab owner, grab car owner, panda kind of people. Please work together to make sure that our building are really safe. We, we, we put the risk at the lowest possible. 
right? I know it's a bit inconvenient. Some people, because they, they say, I stay in condo because of lifestyle. I cannot stay, I cannot go to the gym. What well, is it's in the gym? Yeah. But let's bear with it for the time being. This definitely will be will be ended in one day for sure. Okay, so let's bear with it. Let's let us because now we are at every day about two digit of uh, cases. So I think let's work together, right? So that we can uh, move forward in in, in future. Okay, that okay. Be and be extra responsible to your neighbor. Right. Mm. Yeah. So the question is, you know, your idea of an ideal home. Mm. That is pandemic proof. I know mm. what you have shared with us is, you know, your wish list for your clients, lah. But coming to you, yeah. I think uh, very important that everyone get together in the strata mm. meetings. Everybody must get together. Not like before MCO. Some mm. some people don't know the neighbor, next door neighbor, or opposite neighbor. Mm. To make sure to know who are there. Yes, yeah. it's very important to know your upstairs and your downstairs neighbor. Right, so you can solve a lot in the floor leaking issue. It can be very harmony, it can be very understanding, and eventually you can, you can reduce our burden of the manager. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So it, it, it's kind of unanimous, isn't it? It's about the community, it's about harmonious living. Yeah, it's yeah, about yeah. communication, right? Yeah, you'll be down to that. Yes. Interesting, uh gentlemen, you know, uh that, that was really enlightening. Thank you very much uh for your input and your sharing. And uh of course, you know, uh the snippets of uh, tonight's uh, discussion, Fireside Chat, will be uploaded on our website, uh, www.hpop.my. And the next Friday, uh, the full report will appear in our weekly e-publication. Yeah, so just watch out for that. Yes, and um, of course, you know, just to do a little bit of promo for our upcoming uh, e-publication that will be out tomorrow, but actually it's on our website uh, right now. Uh, the topic that we are talking about is, uh, you know, what property buyers are looking for post-MCO. Uh, that's going to be quite interesting because it's actually based on a survey that we did, yeah. And of course, you know, uh, if we think that the property market is dead and buried, uh, it's not quite true. Uh, a lot of things are happening. And, you know, we've managed to actually speak to people who are transacting uh, deals right now. Uh, you know, agents out there are working very hard. Yes. So we have got all this news for everyone. So, yes, uh, gentlemen, thank you again for your time. Yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Again, which will be soon. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, Chris. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Stay safe.